Hi guys, so continue my style review series. Today we're gonna talk about Ally McGraw. If you're new to my channel, I'm gonna leave the link on my Kibi playlist down below. It's a Kibi body types and uh, overall it's 13 body types and we are looking at the 20th century style icon that represents this or that body type of David Kibi's book. It's an official David Kibi's list. And we're just checking how this celebrity was dressing herself according to her body type. And that is the signature looks as well. And here it is. Today we're gonna to talk about Ally McGraw and she is natural. They normally look moderate, not super tall, not super small. Uh, they look average, they look slightly muscular, their bone structure is blunt, not sharp and not rounded, so it's like slightly squarish. They look slightly angular, their shoulders can be slightly squarish, their faces can be slightly squarish, their facial, facial features can be squarish. Wide set eyes sometimes, um, not very large, pretty strong lips. They can have some pronounced musculature on their face too sometimes. They can have slightly wider top part here. She's American actress and activist. She was born in 1939 in New York and her active years were since the 60s and our favorite decades, of course. And she is now in her 80s and she looks wonderful. So we're gonna look her through all those years. She gained international profile for her role in the film Love Story, which was made in 1970. But as far as her career started in the 60s, then what she did in the 60s. That was a little surprise for me because I didn't know, not many know that she was connected to fashion. In the 60s, she spent six years working at Harper Bazaar magazine as a photographic assistant to fashion maven Diane Freeland. She worked as a fashion model at Vogue magazine as a fashion model and as a photographer's stylist. She has also worked as an interior decorator and then she started acting. So that love story movie uh, happened in the 70s when she was, what, uh, 31 years old. So you can see she does have that fashion background and we can see that. She does have a certain taste. She has very timeless style. However, it was very signature style. So we can see some very signature moments that look amazing on her and doesn't mean that it will look amazing on everybody else. Everybody else has their own signature touches. But the body type, there are certain things that look great on that type, the body type of natural and she does incorporate that in her style and that does look amazing. Now, in my ever video about those style icons of the 20th century, I talk about 60s and 70s separately just because those are the decades that I was so different in terms of fashion, right? I will remind you very fast, 60s, uh, short shapes, color blocks, geometry, unnatural makeup, unnatural hair. 70s, on contrary, longer shapes, unconstructed shapes, no geometry, nature, very natural makeup, very natural hair, grown up hair, and natural hair color. So what can be further than that? But when we talk about Ali McGraw, we're gonna talk about 60s and 70s together because I couldn't see much difference. I started seeing much difference in the end of the 70s. This is when she changed her haircut. But before that, everything seemed very close to each other. Somehow in the 60s, she was managing adding some 70s into there, some kind of like from the future. So maybe she was one of those who created those, some of the future trends. We don't know, but I assume why not? Because in the 60s, she already had that grown hair with central parting, and I haven't seen her with a side parting until probably the 80s. So she always had the central parting, and from my viewpoint, it's very hippie. It's very hippie. They did silver parting and both men and women were growing their hair. Not a geometric haircut, nothing. It just grows naturally, it's hanging down like this. So that is very hippie. So this is the haircut that she had in those years. Interesting that the makeup, she had same makeup in the 60s and in the 70s. While many women come from this in the 60s to this in the 70s, she pretty much had something in between. So her lips, was always very pale. She wasn't a lip person, so she did, she always had that very pale lipstick or lip gloss, which is very beautiful and very, very modern today. And then she had that smoky eye, but it looked very soft. See, she had very contrasted, very dark colored eyes, 
dark colored hair and she was very tanned looking. Her coloration was pretty bright and contrasted. So for her, that smoky eye with blended dark gray or black eyeshadow around her eyes didn't look as intense. So even during the daytime, it looked pretty natural on her. So she used that eye makeup from the 60s to the 70s both. I didn't see her with that flick, with those drawn lashes on the bottom and on top. In most of the pictures that I saw, she stayed true to her own style. When we talk about the clothes, of course, in the 60s, when she was modeling for Vogue and then she was an assistant for photographers and she worked in a magazine, she was all surrounded by fashion. She was photographed in many different outfits, whether it would be very geometric, color-blocked, stripy and very bright colored clothes. It looked amazing on her because, she, again, as I said, she has very bright coloration. So on her, all those greens, oranges mixed with pinks mixed with blues all that looked amazing so she would be photographed in that and of course the clothes that she was wearing that was very constructed mostly in the 60s and then it went more to unconstructed in the 70s but what is interesting here is naturals just look gorgeous in all those kind of experiments they just don't look very well when it's very clean minimalistic very stiff and sharp that sometimes can make them look slightly angular, cold, it's too cold on them. They look amazing with some layers, with some accessories, with something hanging on them a little bit. It doesn't have to be hanging like everything hanging. No, it's just those little details. And she always had those details. She was always covered with all those accessories. Something was on her head, whether it's a hat or hairband, but we're gonna talk about this a little bit later. So that was the 60s moment, which very gradually, from my viewpoint, led her to the 70s. And in the 70s, she still had same hair color, same haircut, same makeup. So it didn't change very much. She still would use a lot of accessories, a lot of necklaces, a lot of different earrings, hanging earrings. They look amazing with that. Loads of rings, for example. They still would use layered outfits. That means that even if it's very constructed, let's say it's a suit, let's say it's all same color, that looks amazing. She was wearing some layers underneath. She would wear some vest underneath that vest she would wear some t-shirt on top she would have some blazer or something like that and then shorts white color looked amazing as a contrast with her skin looked very very bright and uh, very crisp and very fresh she also would wear her hair sleek to the back now in this case you have to see for yourself for your bone structure your face for your hair area how much volume your hair has and and things like that because some women might feel like when they do their hair sleek then their face looks a bit more angular than it is and it does you know longer hair hair hanging by your face is softening your face a little bit but in her case that what she was doing and it was very beautiful on her amazing on her she would make her hair sleek it's not about the clothes piece it's not about the just one earring or one necklace is all together we're building our outfit all together and we're always balancing things it's not it doesn't mean that if she looks great with hanging earrings with a lot of necklaces with uh, a lot of rings with tousled and fresh or layered hair with relaxed shapes dresses with this and that and then and that she has to wear all that all together otherwise she won't look her best no on contrary if she wants to look like a dramatic with very, very precise and sleek, slim suits with very precise and sharp edges. Then she's adding something in there into that outfit that is whispering to us, maybe some layers, some scarf, some natural necklace or med medallion, something there from a natural kind of universe. Then it all balances it out and it like all comes all together. So that is the key for their look. Sometimes she would wear something very classic. It looks amazing on them. Stripes look amazing on them. All those different kinds of stripes. 
and then of course she would have some outfits that were very they are very classy and they're very classic and chic and elegant and they look on every type amazingly throughout the years no matter what is a macro trend it's so-called macro trend the trend that lasts for decades and then she was wearing that too she would wear that very classic tops or t-shirt black t-shirt white t-shirt white top stripy top um, sleeveless or with some sleeves or long sleeves and then on the bottom she would have jeans flare jeans very often because it was 70s and she was very hippie and then pants the regular pants white pants dark pants and she would have shorts bermudas like longer shorts to the knee length that all looked amazing on her most of naturals though i think look more chic with the side parting unless you really go for that hippie look so you have to see for yourself. I could see her with very long nails and I assume that it was her nails. They were growing so long and also a bushy brow. Her brows were always very natural and looks like she didn't do anything with her brows. She didn't pluck them out. Unlike the 60s girls, she was very much 70s to me, even in the 60s. She was always a little bit boho to me with all those accessories, necklaces, with uh, hair bands. Look at the amount of different hair accessories that she was wearing. And naturals look amazing with that. Different kinds of hair bands, different hats, different uh, caps. They all look great. Different kinds of patterns look amazing on them. Uh, it could be stripes, different kinds of stripes, vertical, horizontal, or it can be very boho and natural patterns. There are so many different ways how you can style this or that piece of clothes and there are so many combinations. Can you imagine how many combinations there are to create that piece? But what we are looking in these videos you can't even imagine how well your eyes are training right now to see the differences and feel pieces of clothes. She was experimenting with her accessories a lot. She would put a scarf as a belt. Probably the earliest was Grace Kelly when I saw this thing, when she would put this little scarf instead of the belt for her jeans or pants. And then Jane Birkin, a bit later, she, Jane Birkin was also 60s, 70s. She was repeating that trick too. And now we can see Ali McGraw, she was also doing that. Now, one of her signature looks, I think, was chalker. And this is one of the reasons why I'm wearing this today. I love chokers. This one is very funny because it has Cheshire Cat in it. I bought this many years ago in AliExpress for about $1. And I'm wearing actually pretty often, even with evening gowns. Probably not for every type, but there are loads of different chokers out there right now in many shops. So you can check for them. They look amazing. It doesn't have to be just black one like in the 90s. Actually, she started doing it in the 60s and her chokers were so different. You can actually take any lace. You know, in Walmart, they are selling very cheap those laces that you can buy for, I don't know what, for, for sewing something. And they can be golden, silver, black, different kinds of ribbons. And then you can use that as a chalker. You can just buy many of them and then you can change your look very often with, with that, just depending on your outfit. That would be great. And then she would wear some scarves here. She would wear loads of necklaces. For example, she would have some you know, chains, medallions, something wooden, something metal. Uh, the only thing that I didn't see her during 60s and 70s was big geometric plastic, uh, colored plastic accessories. Now, if you are natural and you're also looking into that uh, direction just to mimic some of her outfits, keep in mind that if your coloration is much softer, if you have lighter skin, lighter hair, lighter eyes, uh, your colors should be probably not as intense because in this case, for naturals, it's very important. Their bone structure is requiring something that is very close to their coloration. They don't look pale in beiges. They look beautiful with very natural colors. However, some bright accents can really bring some life to your appearance because you still have pretty strong bone structure, so you can use that. Now, in the end of the 70s, she changes her hair. So we are coming slowly to the 80s. So she changed her hair, she cut them shorter, approximately that length, and she made that layers. And I'm, I don't know if her hair is naturally wavy and 
what's happening with the volume naturally. If she had to hairstyle them a certain way, her hair that way so it would be super tousled and um, everything was curled outside. Maybe her, her natural hair is just slightly wavy naturally. Maybe it was easy for her to do that. Maybe she was back calming them, I don't know. But definitely in the 70s and in the beginning of the 80s, we start having different silhouettes. So women go for a different kinds of hair color and haircuts too. Later, she didn't even short her hair and then there's a movie that is called Convoy. There she has uh, short and curly hair. What a big difference. But still her makeup stays more or less same. Slightly smoky eyes, pale lips, not much changes in there and still she has some accessories and we slowly go to the 80s and in the 80s she starts having brighter lips along with bright eyes. So it's the first time I see her with a lipstick with brighter lipstick. Her hair keeps changing. It has shorter shapes, slightly longer shapes, but she doesn't go back to the longer hair in that decade. So she keeps them short. And then what we start seeing is big plastic accessories like plastic bracelets, plastic necklaces and clips and something like that. So not sure about huge geometric and plastic shapes for the naturals. I still think they look amazing with the, the metal, wood mixture of those things, ceramic. Now we go closer to the 90s and we see that very typical, first of all, very typical casual look in the 90s that was very popular. White t-shirt, blue jeans, bright blue jeans, black belt and black oversized blazer with big shoulders. We can remember Julia Roberts in this look, Winona Ryder in this look. So there are many people who are actually dressing like that in the 90s, in the end of uh, the 80s. So she also kind of got to that casual look, but it still looks amazing on them. They look amazing with slightly relaxed shapes, maybe not extremely weird shapes with huge balloon sleeves on strange shaped skirts and stuff like that, but slightly oversized shapes. They look amazing on them. They don't look very good in super bodycon, everything squeezed, extreme glamour, you know? They have to add some natural, relaxed feeling to their looks, even if they go for something sleek. Now, she started having gray hair at some point in her life, like they're very white, platinum white, but she was dyeing her hair black for some time and until she let it go. And I think she let it go in the end of the 90s and 2000s. She already started trying letting them grow like that. First, she let it go uh, at the front, those white pieces of hair. Then she, I think, was coloring them from time to time. And then until she let it go white completely. And that looks amazing on her again because she has such a bright coloration. And women with bright coloration, uh, they normally get their gray hair that is very white, so platinum white. In the 90s, she also was trying different kinds of lip pencils. Remember in the 90s, like brick color lip pencils or dusty bordeaux colors, which are very popular nowadays too. But in the 90s, it was very popular. And then she was experimenting with that too. In the 90s, she had different kinds of haircuts. She still doesn't go back to her long hair. So she's cutting them shorter and normally layered, which also look pretty modern at that time. And I think she looks great in that too. Now she's in her 80s. She looks amazing. And she, I think she has her clothes line if, correct me if I'm wrong, I think I saw this in the internet somewhere. And I do recommend you research about this. She is that example of a very beautiful combination of natural and classic style. Right now, look at that. Look at that, how well it all balanced, how beautiful she uses those white and black colors, how beautiful she uses those stripes, how beautiful she uses those colors how amazingly she plays with her accessories, how much she loves that. And some naturals, they don't look very good with huge accessories because it depends also on your facial features, how small they are or how big they are. Naturals have, can have pretty different facial features, you know, they don't have to be all the same. So you just have to see for yourself. So for, for some people, it just can be too much. Just go for middle size or for a smaller size, but still they do look amazing with several necklaces, several rings, and um, sometimes over accessorizing for them looks very natural and very beautiful and actually pretty effortless as if she didn't try too much. Her casual styles also, she looks very modern 
and grades that amazing thing when she's um she still looks very classic she has very classic style but with loads of additions loads of natural additions loads of additions of uh, natural shapes more relaxed shapes layers again some patterns and some accessories so for stylux inspiration for sure go to check her out. I have three Pinterest boards. One of the boards is celebrities, body types of the Kibi celebrities list. I'm gonna leave all the links down below. Also, I have a wardrobe for the body types where I just pick up clothes that for sure will work for this type. It doesn't mean that it won't work for other types. No, it's just more or less that you can make the capsule out of that. And the third board in my Pinterest I have is just inspiration for the body type. So women I show there, they're not necessarily this type, but the outfit they have and the vibe itself is an inspiration. So you get that I the idea, the idea for the outfits, like where you can go with that. So thank you so much guys for watching and I will see you soon. Bye-bye. Also, you can subscribe on my Instagram all the links I'm gonna leave down below. Also, you can become my sponsor or subscribe on my Patreon for some exclusive videos, some early access to these videos, and um, just if you want to support me and my channel. Thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.